Yeah. Okay, 360 north, 360 north. They're coming uphill? Seconds ago, okay, relax, relax, relax. Hey, relax, relax, man. Look, I can't tell you who, but I was sitting here, okay? I was sitting here, okay? Woo. I've been expecting Woo. you, okay? Just five, five minutes, bro. Just sit down in the living room, have a conversation, you know? Just, you know, you're gonna put the gun down, and, you know? Let's chop it up, let's chop it up, okay? We're gonna talk. We're gonna do a whole lot of talk. Come on, come on, right this way. Okay. Yo, this is crazy, bro. Like, I still can't believe this. All right, so like I was saying, I was sent here, bro, to answer your questions. So go ahead and just hit me. I still can't believe it. All right, man, let's get to some of these questions. What's it like being a creator? Damn. Boy, they came out the gates with it, didn't they? It's like being a conceptual architect, you know? Yeah. Like, you know that, that feeling you get when you first get an idea? Like, you don't know how everything's gonna come together, but you had this visualization. And it's like, from there, bro, you just like, piece by piece, it's like building, you know? Just adding layer on top of layer until you, you get where you wanna go. And that end product, it's crazy. Conceptual architect, huh? <laughs> I'm still in that one. <laughs> bro, you the one that came up with it. <laughs> all right, all right, moving on, moving on. Dear and ask, People become complacent with success. How do you maintain that hunger when it's going well? You just got a lot of grind, man. It's almost like working out in that sense because you become so obsessed with the, the routine and the process of it all. And when things start going well, man, that's when you should be getting hungrier, not the other way around. You know, that's like blood in the water, man. When you, when you see things going well, it just makes you want to keep going. And so... And seeing yourself evolve, like just continuing to level up and just reach new heights, man, I don't ever want to look back with any regrets. I want to I want to be sure that I took this as far as I could take it. And so I think you take that approach, man. You can stay hungry with anything. You a bad man, dog. Like it's really no letting up with you. <laughs> Not at all, bro. Not at all. Oh, you gonna love this one. So Jay asks, why do you hate LeBron James so much? Of course, Jay would ask this. We've we been through this, bro. Like, LeBron, to me, put off one of the craziest, most ridiculous free agency moves ever. Like, to go and join D-Wade with Chris Bosh, like, that was the first time we saw two top three players on the same team with the top ten player. And it was all in free agency, bro. Like, that's crazy. And, like, to me, that set the precedent for, like, the new AAU mentality, the new buddy-buddy there was no more of the rivalry kind of feels like I want to play with my best friend kind of deal. And so, you know, I grew up on Kobe and them, and that was just different, bro. So that's when I stopped messing with LeBron. And you know I can't stand his ass, too. That's why he ain't Jordan. Anyway. Your boy Dub, e Dub A Media says, what are your thoughts on the music video scene for freelancers? Oh, man, the music video scene for freelancers is one of the worst. Like, unless you're trying to do that full time, bro, I would not recommend doing it. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Bro, I love music videos. Dog, I love music videos too, man. But 99% of the time, you're dealing with artists that got this big Grand Hollywood idea, right? And they got a budget of like $400. It's like, bro, you got to pick and choose, bro. <laughs> Boys want to be like Chris Breezy. I'm like, bro, you got Breezy money? Like, it makes no sense, bro. Like, you put in all this time on the pre production side as far as location scouting working with the artist and getting on the same page. Then you got to shoot it. Then you got to edit it. Then when you send it to them, they got all these ticky-tack revisions for $500, bro. Like, let me ask you, would you rather shoot a five-minute music video for $500 that's going to take you like two weeks, or would you rather do a five-minute corporate interview for $5,000 that's going to take you a day? Hello, $3,000? <laughs> hey, you said it, not me. All right, bro, now you really got me curious. Next question. Ajish asks, what is your least favorite part of the creative process? 
Oh man, easy setting up. Just the storage and like the equipment. You know, I'm a naturally organized person, so like the chaoticness of all the equipment just it gets to me, man. Bro, I'm saying that Lexus be packed. Lexus? Yeah, Lexus. <laughs> this guy, man. Bro, you really thought you was gonna keep living a sedan life like that? What the heck? Anyway. All right, so what's your favorite project so far? Oh, man, this is easy. The New York travel film. Bro, still? Bro, that was like our first project. And like, you know, being there trying to capture everything, it was our first time being in New York as an adult. We like kids at a candy store, man. Like, that project is going to forever have a special place in my heart, bro. I hope you're getting around a little bit more, bro. Like, I got all these places I want to go to, man. The world bigger than New York, bro. Hey, man, I got something for you, bro. Like, we doing a little something, all right? And the crazy thing is, bro, we documenting the entire experience, man. It's going to be dope. <laughs> all right, man, I'm going to trust you on it. Next question. All right, so what's been the best part about the journey? I would say just working with other people in their own respective crafts. Like, seeing people going just as hard as you in their own respective lane, it's inspiring, man. It just makes you want to go even harder. Damn. I ain't even know I like people like that, bro. I mean, aside from that, bro, I would just say the journey itself, man. Like, seeing yourself reach new heights and, like, continue to climb after you feel like you've plateaued, just reach level after level after level, it's amazing, bro. And, like, the recognition from your peers, like, seeing how your work influences people and how it touches people, there's nothing better than that, bro. Damn, we doing it like that? <laughs> yeah, bro, for real. All right, then, next question. All right, so Jamie asks, what would you say is the biggest life lesson thus far? Biggest life lesson? Hmm. I would say just don't compare, man. Like, there's no handbook to this game of life. Every time you feel like you start to get a, you know, a good understanding and grasp of things, life just has a funny way of slapping you back 10 steps. So I would just say, man, live your life unapologetically. You know what I'm saying? Help people um, and just, you know, leave behind a legacy that you're happy, that you can pass down. At the end of the day, that's all it's about. You know, life is too short for anything else. You ever feel like people don't support your business, bro? Of course, bro. That's life. Everybody's not going to support you and have the same vision as you, bro. That doesn't make you mad? Like, feeling like you're not getting the recognition you deserve? Of course, bro. But that's life. You get over it. And it gives you a greater sense of appreciation for the people that actually do. Man, I ain't trying to hear that, bro. Bro, what more approval you want than when the check clears the client's account? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, true. Bro, you got family, friends, and even people that you've never even met supporting you. It's crazy, bro. Wild. Well, when you put it that way, okay. All right. Let's see what we got. Walk me through the process of how you bring an idea to reality. Hey, <laughs> you can answer this one. Me? Yeah, bro, it's still the same. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, first you gotta you gotta get inspired. Like you gotta get your mind to that creative realm. You know what I'm saying? Where where your ideas just flow through and you can just jot everything down. So first it's just getting inspired. You want me to tell you why? Hold up, bro. You really studied the psychology of this? <laughs> of course, bro. So you know that state of mind when you're like productive and like you're moving around, you're doing all these different things, like your brain waves are like just bouncing off the charts, right? That's your productive state, but that's not your creative state. Your creative state is like that trance you're in when you're listening to music, you know, you're meditating, anything therapeutic, you know, low light environments, your brain waves are like this, nice and smooth. That's your creative state, bro. And you're a monster when you're in there. Damn, so that's why I get my best ideas at night. World kind of slows down a little bit. It's low light, it's calm. It makes sense, all right, all right. So Ashley says, what keeps you going and motivated? Damn, to be honest, I just want to be the best. Like, I wish there was a more in-depth answer there, but that, that's really it. I just want to be the best. Everything about me hates second place. I always think there's room for improvement. And I always feel like there's a reason to go back to the drawing board. So it just kind of makes it exhausting sometimes because it's like you never take a day off. You know, like my mind is always constantly on the next thing. And I guess it's one of the, you know, the good and the bad things about myself. So, yeah, it's good to know you ain't let up, bro. Because sometimes I ask myself, you know, if you're going to keep that same level of inspiration. It's good to know. 
Anyway, Josh says, what is some advice that you can give to small YouTubers and even those starting out? Like 14K, Josh? Yeah. He ain't no small time YouTuber and he ain't never been. Hey man, I'm just reading the questions, bruh. Anyway, man, first I would say learn how to captivate and engage your audience in those first eight seconds. Like that's really the short amount of time you have before somebody's gonna decide if they're gonna watch your video or not, man. And it's so short. Everything from the content to the aesthetics has to be on point. Like it's crazy, man. The attention spans these days are so short. Second, I would say learn how to market and distribute your content, you know? Like what good is content that nobody sees? Content may be king, but distribution is queen. And thirdly, for anybody that's new that's just wanting to start out, man, I would say just start. Like we got this backwards logic as far as like wanting to perfect things coming into something. It just doesn't work that way. Like the only way you're gonna learn is in the actual implementation phase. When you're out there in the field, getting your hands wet in the trenches, you know? So that's where you're gonna get the most growth from. So just start, man, just start. He probably gonna be bigger than you with these tips. <laughs> Bro, y'all be going head to head, man, it's crazy. All right, man, Steve asks, what tips do you have for social media marketing? Ooh. Oh man, I remember these days. I would say first, just learn how the algorithms work, man. Like we live in an information overloaded era and those algorithms are gonna decide who sees what at what point. So you can kind of give yourself a leg up by understanding exactly how to get your content out there first and foremost. Those goddamn algorithms, man, I swear, they the worst, bruh. And secondly, I would say, man, learn your target audience. You know, it's easier to place things when you know where they belong, but you can't do that if you don't know who your product or who your service is for. So that's second and third. I would say, man, make your content as easy to ingest as possible. You know, like different things, like adding subtitles on your videos is a big because majority of people watch your videos on mute. Isn't that crazy? Like, so just make your, make your content as easy to ingest as possible. Bro, like it's so much stuff that goes into it, man. I don't know why we just can't create videos and that's it. Like, it's really ridiculous, bro. Anyway, Koi asks, what is your why of becoming a video creator? Man, I just love the art of storytelling and creating in general, bro. Like to immerse other people in a different realm and world and then like evoke different kind of emotions from them. You like a real world puppet master, bro. It's crazy. I love it. It's like the ability to take an abstract idea and then build on it until you have something tangible that you can put out into the world. Like how dope is that? All right, so Hoop Fanatic J says, how do you find inspiration to add new skills to your video editing? Man, I think first and foremost, I just wanted to learn the basics of what was out there. Like, what all can you do? And after I did that, I just wanted to see, how could I do the same thing five different ways? And once you do that, man, your toolbox starts to get deep. You start coming into situations like, how I want to kill him this time. It's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, I know all about that toolbox, bro. Be in that bag. Hey, no shade, bro, but your toolkit is limited, bro. <laughs> Damn. Just hurt my little feelings then. Hey man, I'm just letting you know. You're on your way though, man. You coming. When it comes to working, what is something that you haven't done, but would love to do? Oh man, I think it would be so dope to have like the world's most premier filmmakers all in like a little bubble and have a competition where you all get the same script and the same ideas, right? But you get to tell the story different using your own distinct styles. I think that would be so dope to see the different results and you know, just have cash prizes for first, second, and third. I think it would be so creative to see. Yeah, that does sound like it'd be dope, bro. It really does. Anywho, all right. T asks you, do you see yourself making movies anywhere in the future? Movies? Damn, probably not. I'd love to, man, but it's such a hard industry to break into, you know? Damn, I wanted to make movies, bro. I mean, believe it or not, bro, you do have your own signature short film series called A Series of Virtues, bro. And it's pretty hot. Like, people look forward to all the new episodes. Wait, like my own series? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? I bet, bet, bet. Okay, okay, okay. In your 2020 Awakening video, you left us wondering, is there going to be a part two? <laughs> Yo, I still remember that film, bro. Nah, we ain't make a part two. It's funny because I, I just remember, like, wondering if we was even going to make it through 2020 at that point, right? Like... It was just a crazy year. I'm so glad we got that clown up out the office, though, bruh. Hey, all right. 
If you could work with any famous director or filmmaker, who would it be? Oh man, Michael Bay, hands down. But Mike, Mike Lau is that's me. That's all me. Yeah, whatever, bro. All right. Anyway, oh, this is a good one. It's from your boy Beast. How do you feel about people grabbing 4K cameras and self-proclaiming they're great? <laughs> hey, that's funny. Man, they shoot movies on iPhones, bro. You just got to invest in your skills and knowledge, bro. That's what's going to make you different. All right, here's one. I'm new to film. What advice do you have to launch quickly and effectively? Oh, man, first, just start. Easy. You just got to get started, man. And secondly, YouTube University. Like, I can't stress that enough. Everybody should be enrolled. Man, that's for sure how we got started, man. Third, I would say just learn the basics of operating a camera and then learn the basics of film. Like, the last thing you want is to have all these creative ideas, right? But then you get to the technical side of it and it limits you so you don't actually get to bring those ideas into fruition. That would be the worst. Hey, but check it. Here go another rookie. Go ahead and school him. Say, what gear would I need to start? Oh, man. Camera and a lens. That's it. Literally, that's all you need. Don't get caught up in the gear like this guy. Boy, you still love throwing shade, I see. Oh, yeah, and a laptop to edit, obviously. All right, so if time and money were out of the equation, which of your wildest ideas would you like to make a reality? It's from Dan. Oh, if money was out the equation, I'd love to script and shoot my own, like, horror film series. Like, think A Nightmare on Elm Street, but I get to come up with the villains and all the characters and the plot and whatnot. That would be fire. Now stop playing with me, man. You know I love scaring people. Like, horror? I already know the lighting would go crazy, man. That would be dope. Like, man, we got to make that happen, bro. We got to make that happen. All right, so. Do you surround yourself with like-minded creatives or creatives from different niches? Oh, man, absolutely. Like, you need the different sources of inspiration. Like, seeing all the, you know, the different dope content that people have come up with, it's inspiring, man. And, like, you... It sparks so many ideas within yourself. Like, take my boy Beast, for example. Like, we're so similar filmmaking-wise. You know, we like the big Hollywood budgets, the big equipment, the big gear. And, you know, we're all pretty much always on the same page. And then you have somebody like my boy Dan, who's just like, man, just give me a camera and a lens, and that's it. And at the end of the day, magic is made on both sides, bro. So, you know, just use what works for you to get it from, you know, from A to Z. Man, that boy Dan is just different, bro. Well, it's crazy ass. All right, how do you exercise your creative brain while being in COVID? I just let my mind roam, man, and get lost in my thoughts. And when that happens, I just write everything down, bro, because believe it or not, there's stories there or elements of stories there. Like, you can always come back at a later date and add on to it. And, you know, some sometimes that serves as the foundation of some of my best ideas. But I promise you this, if you don't write them down and you go to sleep, that idea is gone forever. Finito. Finish. Okay, okay, check it. Okay. Hey, Marcus asked you, when you plan on jumping in both feet and going full-time with film? <laughs> you answer, because I don't want to spoil it. Wait, how far in the future are you? <laughs> Come on, man. You know I can't answer that. If anybody knows the power of a good cliffhanger, it should be you. You still handsome, and you ain't fat yet. Probably like two years after you get your commission with the FDIC. That actually leads us to our next question, bro. So any tips on financing your dreams? I would say keep your expenses low, man. It's like we have a tendency, you know, when we make more money, we feel like we got to spend more. That's that's not the case. And secondly, I would say find, you know, different various ways to make money in your passion. So if we take film, for example, maybe I shoot weddings on the weekend, right? And then maybe I rip my gear out throughout the week. So that's two ways, right? It's two ways you can find, you know, within your own respective passion to make money. And then once you get the proceeds from it, just put it back into your business so you can keep growing. That's what I would recommend. All right, man. So your boy Byron asks, what's the most difficult part of balancing your career and your passion? And what if the day comes when you can never pursue your passion full time? How do you approach that reality? Man, the hardest part about balancing career and passion is that there is no balance like the question implies. It's literally integration. You got to prioritize. And when you prioritize, things are left off. And when that happens, you see what you what you value most. And you'll be surprised at what gets left off that list, man. And as far as not being able to do what I love full time, I mean, that's why you call it a passion. Because it doesn't matter if you get paid for it or not. You're still going to do it regardless. 
But there's a tendency for people that love things, they're typically good at the things they love most times. Okay, okay, okay. So, go another one for you. Typically, how long is the process from shooting to putting out the final project? It, it depends. depends. <laughs> <laughs> Just depends on the scope of the project, right? Like, obviously, the idea has to hit you. Then you got to script out the idea and get all the details down. That's, that's a few days itself, right? You got to shoot it. That could be a couple of days. You got to edit it. That could be a couple more. So it honestly just depends, man. It could be anywhere from a week to two weeks to a month. Just depends. Bruh, clients still got these Hollywood ideas with like an $800 budget. Now you know that ain't changed. <laughs> All right, so Barn also asks, what's the biggest misconception about you? That I'm an active person. Bro, have they met you? Apparently not, bro. Like you give me Netflix, YouTube, pen and paper, and Call of Duty. I'm set for like 95% of my life, bro. The only times I'm going out is probably to the gym, the hoop, or workout, or if I need to get some food, man. That's it. Hey, that's facts, bro. I will never see that changing. How would you describe your style of filmmaking? My filmmaking style, hmm. As far as emotions, I would say just, you know, really relatable, heartfelt, inspirational. And as far as the filmmaking style myself, really dramatic. I like, you know, dark. You know, versatile pacing from fast to slow, and you know, just um, just giving something, you know, people something that they can relate to and vibe to, for sure. All right, are you open to other creators collaborating with you for special projects? Man, what? Absolutely. It's like iron sharpening iron. Man, Beast put together like this damn Justice League team of filmmakers, bro. And it's just crazy. Some of the best projects that I film have been alongside other filmmakers, you know. Like, anytime me and Dan are in D.C., you know it's something crazy going on, bro. Bro, you can never forget about the homies, man. Like, it's just dope. Be feeling like you got, like, a power circle of people around you, bro. This is forever dope. What is the best thing about what you do film-wise? Man, definitely just seeing things come full circle. You know, everything from the abstract idea and everything that goes into it to the finished product and then putting it out into the world and seeing the different reactions and responses you get, you'll, it never gets old, ever. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one, okay. When should someone leave their full-time job to pursue their dream full-time? Oh, this is tough. Uh, let me preface by saying there's no right or wrong answer here, but I would say when you have a, a good foundation and understanding of your skills, you know, that's gotta be first. Second, I would say, Having a good body of work or a portfolio that really speaks and is reflective of your skills is probably second. And third, I would just say, keep you an emergency, <laughs> six month emergency fund of your personal living expenses because you're going to need a fallback in case something get rough. Damn, bro. I don't even want to know what the risky method even looks like. want to ask, what first sparked your interest in making films? Oh, this might be my favorite one. To be honest, travel films, like <laughs> the ability to be immersed in a world that you have yet to experience, but you feel like you're there, like that's so that's so transformative, man. And it's like reading in that sense, you know, like to be able to experience other people's experiences without actually having to go through the things that they did, like that's so powerful. And I, I don't think people understand how powerful that is. Bro, I've been trying to tell people about reading, man. Like, it's crazy, dog. People don't understand the power in it. Yeah, that's life for you, bro. And you pretty hard-headed yourself, man. Yeah, all right. All right, Brian asks, what would you like to be remembered for after you die? And I just want to be a wonderful person, bro. Wonderful son, wonderful dad, wonderful husband, wonderful individual, man. Damn. That's deep. Aside from that... One of the quotes I love is, people will never forget how you made them feel despite anything else. And I hope when they see my films, it brings back good memories.